thank you for joining me for Mama to Mama. It's my podcast where I interview dynamic women from across the DFW and, you know, Autumn Yarbrough, when I met you, I immediately knew I wanted to talk more about your story. I mean, we met at a birthday party uh, between a mutual friend that we both love and saw today, actually. Um, and then from that party though, I just couldn't stop thinking about like, I have to connect with this woman because that story you told me in just 20 minutes, cause you had to go, <laughs> um, was something that like I resonated with as somebody who married into a legacy business and a dynasty family, if you will, um, in the DFW. So number one, just tell us about who you are and who you come from. So I am Autumn Yarborough. I am third generation in the hair care business. I have the fortunate honor and blessing to be a part of the Cottrell family. Uh, Comer Cottrell and his brother, Jimmy Cottrell, back in the, I would say, late 60s and then going into the 70s, started a hair care business. And how it really boomed was really providing hair care affordable hair care access to our community mm -hmm. and also on government basis because there were no well, army bases. There were no opportunities of hair, ethnic hair care, textured hair care is what I like to call it, mm -hmm. but textured hair care needs even on the bases. So my grandfather and my uncle did an excellent job making sure the, our people that are serving our country had access to those, but let alone our community. Um, we had an issue with the affordability of going to the salons right. at the end of the day during those times in the 60s and 70s. And so they were really strategic in providing products in their hands for those that couldn't make it into the salon. But let me not be wrong. Getting in the salon was still a desire. So it didn't stop the desire, even though the products were available there during those times. The respect of the professional community was always understood even in my grandfather's business. Mm -hmm. But to continue on, he is definitely, for my grandfather and my uncle, they established Soft and Beautiful, which became one of the top brands in uh, textured hair, as well as the big one where my mom was involved in the business just for me. And mm -hmm. then, yes, come through, mm -hmm. but where people really enjoyed and he made his first big boom was the Curla Kit. You know, the whole tease of the <laughs> let your soul glow. So, um, but the whole, it the was Carl is the master of it all. And, you know, they started off in Los Angeles and then moved the business here in Dallas where they settled and did very well. And then eventually did sell the business to what's now known as Unilever. Um, so they did a wonderful journey, all of those things. But to your point of being a generational or a legacy business, uh, I'm doing something very different. Mm -hmm. So I've had the fortunate opportunities of the networks and then leaving the integrity of the business so well where the legacy part is that, but then my part comes in of doing a whole business with a different approach yep. and re really trying to revolutionize the industry for textured hair. And let's talk about that business. We have some of these <laughs> lovely right here. Yes. Uh, New Standard, which like I love. Um, by the way, can you <laughs> New Standard. Yes, um, Changes really the game. And one thing that, first thing that jumps out at me is your logo, your packaging. It's like very clear that it's made for every type of woman. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yes. So I wanted to make very clear in this industry where it's a strong place that I believe that we provide excellent products, black founders, even to this day. Mm -hmm. But it's sometimes there's blurred lines, not that it's made for all. Right. So even those brands that are out there today, those are made for all because hair is hair. Mm -hmm. Textured hair is hair. And I want to come out clearly saying this is for all. We do have an approach for textured hair. So that to me, I'm glad you noticed we want it to be, I want to shout it from the mountaintops. Right. About that. Can yes. we like do a little like history lesson too? I just want people to know that like I've seen many times when I used to go to the salon and then I would see, like you said, a person of a different ethnicity sitting in a chair, but she had curly hair like me, you know? And so it's like, People know that you like you said that black products aren't necessarily black products. They're textured hair products, and they're just really good. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And so it's just about the quality and, and what you need. It's exactly. not about like 
the black section of Target or there you know, we the, go. This, the store or whatever like that. That part. And so I will say as our brand approaches, and right now we're on e-commerce, I'm very strategic in making sure that when those opportunities come, we're not placed in a certain section because, again, it's about a need and fulfilling the need. Yes. And making sure retailers understand it's a need. Mm -hmm. It's about textured. It's about battling challenges or having hair goals. Correct. A big challenge that I've came across and actually doesn't even deal with texture, a huge issue with all women is dryness. Yeah. Dryness is an issue. Hair loss is an issue. It has nothing to do with, 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 with uh, ethnicity, right. race. And that needs to be discussed. And a black woman should be able to discuss those issues and not be pigeonholed that she, a product is only, and absolutely, I make products for my community, mm -hmm. but it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and to not be pigeonholed, as I would say. So finding those businesses that truly understand that and want to support that. And there are those that are out there and I appreciate it and it's exciting. Yeah. So they, they definitely see that black owned businesses are technically made to solve a problem and not for just one type of person, but for those that have those similar issues. About your products. So one of the other things that I really loved, um, or sorry, remembered immediately when I met you is that I also met your chemist. And so yes. I want to talk a little bit, just some real talk about how, look, we all have social media, right? And we all see people come out with products that they're like before and afters and it's proven. And you know me, like I, I'm going to say this, like I always want to support our people, but sometimes I'm like, I need some science behind this, yes. you know, before I just give you $25. <laughs> I'm just, and that's so true. Yeah. And again, going back to the ability of having those relationships from the previous generation. And when, you, when you've had the opportunity where those relationships are strong, I was easily able to reach out to our chemist, Tracy Ashley. Absolutely phenomenal. 30 years of cosmetic chemistry. That's big. And has yeah. done amazing things. Very familiar with hair and skin. Um, definitely makes sure the efficacy of our products are excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, her creations are unbelievable. And then areas where the wellness side, where she's dabbling in, and you know, we have a new product coming out on that side, along with the vitamins, can't say yet, <laughs> but um, I'll be back though to discuss that. <laughs> um, but the, the nice thing is, is having that genius on your team. Mm -hmm. And that's really honestly, at the end of the day, when you are leading a, a business or being a founder, I would like to say more so, mm -hmm. is it's really a team of leaders we have. And we there is no ego. We share the space equally. They want to see this vision and dream come true because we're teaching hair wellness. We're about hair wellness with the approach of textured hair, making sure all our products work for textured hair. And look, there's science behind it. So it's, absolutely. it's real. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about some of your products. I wanted to see if you can like, I know you said that there is a favorite. And so <laughs> I know personally, my favorite is this bar. <laughs> um, my daughter loves it as well. Aww. And so I'll be sure to do a little video before and after. Um, but could you talk about? Yeah, so we try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Our audience that we really speak to is the busy woman on the go. We call her busy queen. Yes. And we want to say it as easy as one, two, three, nourish, treat, and care. Okay. And a part of that process, we also believe is the stylist is instrumental. So we do have a professional product, which is not here, but it's going to be released in January. So okay. I'm super excited there. But to make sure that the busy woman on the go has access to her daily needs, we start off with the nourish part, which is our vitamins. Mm -hmm. And we do believe beauty starts from the inside. Absolutely. And getting into those habits, taking your vitamins, because as we get older, we have a more difficult time of absorbing the, nutri the nutrients. Mm -hmm. And guess what the number one boogeyman that stops it? Stress. Right. Stress is a huge issue. So we really also target stress all around the mental stress with our vitamins, physical stress with our hair, environmental stress. This Hydra Silk is a really a maintenance product 
that you typically would do the treatment, the full-blown treatment with the stylus, mm -hmm. which we are debuting in January, and that's our Hydrosilk hydrating bond system. And with that, that is where we protect all those physical stresses. So even pulling your hair up in a ponytail with textured hair. Right. Nobody speaks of all the things that happen with textured hair. Right. Textured hair is beautiful by its design, but also very fragile if it's not yes. treated properly. Yes. So we have that to help with the treatment side. And then one of our hottest items that we can't keep on the shelf is our bars. So we have created sustainability here with our shampoo and conditioner. We also believe in water-free products. So we do have other products, but we believe in water-free. We believe giving to the earth will give us nothing but great gems and for the next generations. And I think that's a responsibility we all should have. And with our bars, they're excellent because, again, they're made for the busy woman on the go. They're mm -hmm. concentrated. So we believe that less is more. Right. They also fight any of the pollution, toxin, UV rays, things that we take for granted with our hair that starts to cause more of the, you know, digression of the, of, of the hair. where it's Because it's dead. Mm -hmm. And it continues to just disintegrate that's where you get the split ends that's where you get the weak and the breakage from the bends of the hair so my goal is to make sure at the end of the day i keep your hair on your head because yeah. i come from three generations of baldness Got so it. we can talk about all the styling in the world and how hair should look but nobody and that's where i felt the <coughs> void nobody was talking about keeping your hair on your head no it's like it's interesting too like i mean a lot of times people just start with the hair and stop with the hair but you're like it's a whole, it's a whole habit, lifestyle, it is, it if you is. will, is to it think is. about your hair. I never really thought about like what I ingest, how it affects my hair. Yes. And hair is actually a sign of your health. Think about it. When you are starting to lose your hair, mm. it's not, and you see the doctor, it's not a sign that something's wrong with your hair. Right. It's typically something you're going through, a right. diagnosis you're approaching upon. Something's going on with your body. It's right. a sign. Or like opposite is when like when you're pregnant and your hair can't stop growing like, you know, ten hormones times. and yeah. everything. And that's like the best life. It's like, thank you for that one reward while you're pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that's for me. It was the healthiest and I had ever been. Until postpartum comes yeah. in. Well, that's another episode. And then you lose all <laughs> your hair that you had. Yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, I have a friend that's going through that right now. And so, yeah, I think that this is going to be instrumental. I think it's a game changer personally. Um, so yeah, like I'm excited for you. Thank Very. you. I want to get into the whole purpose of my show, Mama to Mama, because I want to get into some motherhood with you. Absolutely. Um, curveball it, if you will. And I actually, I've never met your kids, but I know you're the mother of two beautiful children, son and a daughter. Uh, just wanted to ask you, how does having children um, influence the way you operate your business? Oh, that's a good one. And I'm sure most mothers always start off with, that's a good one. You, you know, children are amazing, they're resilient, and they provide unconditional love. So showing them work, you know, having a strong work ethic mm -hmm. has definitely came more having being a mother for me. Mm -hmm. And yet showing work-life balance, making sure they get the time from me, that's been very important. And they see that. It, you know, what's so amazing, I saw my mother work so hard, we didn't get to spend the time. Mm -hmm. But she still was the best mother I could ever have. I know a lot of time people equate that, but her time is helping me build this company right now. <laughs> you know? Got it. Um, but what's amazing is because I felt that need growing up, I wanted to make sure I did things differently. Because that's what it's all about. You evolve, you see what you've learned from your you know, growing up, what are you going to do different to make it better? Because that's what every parent wants. I expect mm -hmm. it for my kids. And it was such great joy when I asked my son the other day. And I was like, do you feel like I'm not here around? And he was like, mama, you're around here too much. I was like, I'm winning, you know, yeah. to do a startup. But I involve my family in mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. I involve, like I have the kids putting some labels on some of the products. Okay. I have them help me with the mailers when we have uh, to mail out products. I mean, I have them involved. I have them understand the blood, sweat, and tears, um, you know, of this business. Mm -hmm. 
and and this is not a business where it's like, oh, you're the son of, you know, Autumn and Derek Yarbrough. This belongs to you. No, <laughs> this belongs to the community. Right. My kids will have to work. Right. That's something I learned in my family. No action, no results. So that if you're not working, no. Yeah. And that's something my grandfather believed and my mother believed. Same. Uh, yeah, we, we already was just like, yeah, as soon as they can, like, as far as my kids, um, we already consider them a part of the business, Absolutely. you know, yeah. um, we haven't been able to put them to work in a newsroom yet, but <laughs> as soon enough, but it's like, soon... if you want to be a part of this, <laughs> you want to be a leader in this, you have to execute. Yeah. And yeah. then work ethic is absolutely part yeah. of it. And like you said, it's great foundation. I believe I agree with you. Um, because it's applicable to life. It's like nothing comes easy. Nothing uh, should. Yeah. I don't believe. Um, because then you don't have the same appreciation for when you do get to have the reward. But like, you know, take it day by day, you know, I guess. Um, that's amazing. And then I wanted to also ask about as one that, you know, again, you're not carrying on the legacy of your um, elders business. You started something on your own, but the hair industry itself, did you have any intentions on maybe leading them like i'm not gonna lie when it comes to my kids i want one of them to take the weekly i want i hope, <laughs> I hope one of them you know what i mean can uh take something of this and then use this as a vessel for yeah. generations to come that is my goal so i didn't know if you were like well it was so interesting i think this business was meant to skip to me so mm. my mother was a part of it, but she didn't have a desire to continue to lead. She worked mm. very hard, enjoyed working side by side, her father, one of her best friends. Um, and really when my grandfather decided to sell a business, which she had urged because she was ready for new opportunities along with them, um, she was, you know, happy. Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes I think when the, when I see them two working, she you know, sometimes the child doesn't want to lead, but it was amazing that you skipped the next, you know, that generation to me. Mm. And I'm probably more obsessed than both of them combined in right. this business and my passion and purpose and what I really, really want to do with this industry, especially on the education piece of textured hair, um, those things. And so when I think about my kids being involved in the business, I want them to be involved. But I do believe there needs to be a passion and purpose for me, for them. If it mm -hmm. comes natural, I will do whatever I can to cultivate it and make sure they work hard. They're excellent leaders uh, and they lead with no ego, right. you know, and they're willing to learn and innovate because things continue to change. Mm -hmm. And that's where legacy businesses go wrong. They, it's an entitlement issue that comes along and then not thinking differently, right. not knowing how to understand that businesses are born and they die. So when they're in your hands, your goal is to not have it die. Let's push that clock back as far as possible. Eventually it does happen, but let's push it back. Oh yeah. And so sure. sometimes pushing it back is you have to skip a generation. So if I don't see the interest in my children, I'd be curious to see if I have a grandchild one day. Right. You know, or a nephew or, mm -hmm. you know, there's just so many different directions. So I would love that. But at the end of the day, it could be one of our, the leaders on our team, their child that sees a vision that can take it out of this universe. Wow. I will give it to that. I mean, my biggest thing is the community, though, mm -hmm. that I want this to continue to stay within the community um, with the texture hair, black founder. I still want us to make sure we go that direction. That's, a, that's amazing. And then I think you touched earlier about um, work life balance. Can you tell us some of the tricks? <laughs> that's the only thing I can the magic you yeah. to, to do it. So I will be very honest. There is no trick. The difference is, and I was just telling someone, my me time is this business because I'm that driven. Mm -hmm. I'm that passionate. I feel you have to feel this is your purpose at this time. Now, things can change along the way, but that is where I enjoy. So a lot of people are like, oh, you're working, you're working. Well, to you, I, I would expect it to look like work because right. it's not your dream. It's not your passion. You're here to support what I'm doing. But right. this is something I sleep at night and get excited. In a way, it's like another child. Mm -hmm. When you become a mom, 
there ain't no such thing, that, especially those first six months, work-life balance. Right. That's why you need to love being a mom. Mm -hmm. That is a part of you. As things continue and you nurture your baby and the baby grows and develops, you know, all the skills necessary to start eating on their own and eventually out of the house, they become independent and you redefine yourself. That's the same thing I expect in this business. Yeah. So right now it needs all my love and attention, which I love to get. Right. Love That's it. interesting, the parallel of what you just said about having a, a kid. Because like I know scientifically, <laughs> my mom told me, she was like, it must be science because there's no way that a woman would go through this more than once. But she was like, <laughs> the endorphins that yes, you feel it is. You know, for it the is. kid, it's the same with your business. The yeah. passion is like... Mm -hmm. Oh my God, like I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm doing this. So like I, I'm just saying I can completely relate. I love that. <laughs> um, and I just want to say, like, in closing, like, what's the future for a new standard? Like, what I know you have exciting things happening, it seems like all the time. <laughs> but I want to I want you to tell us like what's the future immediately and then what's your grand vision for a new standard? Oh, well. The few, uh, well, immediately I'll let everybody in on a secret. It probably is not too much of a big secret, but a part of the hair wellness journey is involving a style. It's a, a licensed professional. Yes. And I believe in, you know, getting back in that chair. I do believe DIY is overrated. Definitely for my busy queens, it's overrated. And also it gives you a little bit of me time, you uh, know, uh -huh. but a product that is only going to improve the life, your hair, your yeah. hair health. It's going back into the wellness part. Um, that is a huge reason why my hair is on my head. But I believe it's important that these products are in the hands of the stylist. So we've been fortunate to land a deal with uh, a major retail outlet for professionals in January to release this product. So they have easy access to our product. We're fortunate that the retail police black owned businesses need to be on the shelf. Mm -hmm. A lot of the professional outlets do not have any or very few black owned businesses. Um, a lot of times the black owned businesses had to develop their own distribution channels to even get it in the hands in the salons and stylists, period, even in our own communities. Yeah. And it's exciting that uh, the retail partner we're working with is wanting to change that yeah. nationally. So that is the immediate excitement they saw the vision. They're ready to work with a startup, Black-owned brand. Mm -hmm. uh, so that said a lot. And they're unapologetically making sure everybody knows and to support. So it's been a blessing to see that in the, in the industry and in the community, in the, style, in the beauty community. And then overall, I mean, I don't want to stop. I want hair wellness to be on the forefront. I want these products, not just mine, more people coming into business with hair wellness as their approach. Speaking about textured education where everybody is comfortable and ultimately my vision is that hair is hair. Mm -hmm. It's established very similar what we've done with skincare where we're focused on the challenges of hair, hair loss, breakage, dryness, moisture issues. Yeah. And I see a person that doesn't look like me picking up a product I make. Mm -hmm. That's That's the ultimate and that's around the world yeah well autumn thank you so much thank for you your for time me. because just so you know what you're doing is revolutionary like i said it before it's like anybody can just come out with a product but you put science behind it you put business behind it you put wellness behind it like that's a lot of levels you know <laughs> then, then the professional you know yes. product line side too it's like and then you're just coming out the gate with that. And so I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. I'm like, I got chills just <laughs> listening to you. Because I was just like, it's just, I see it for you. And and I just, I can't cheer you on hard enough. So thank you so much for your time. It's an honor. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here.